My name is Cedric. I'm the climatologist with the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology based in Barbados. I want to wish one and all a happy World Meteorological Day. Us in the weather business, we don't typically just look at the weather today and tomorrow, but we also try to find a context from climate in which the weather takes place. So in that light, I want to present to you a climate brief for the Caribbean for the next three months. So if we think about the months of March until May, that typically marks the second half of the Caribbean dry season. What is characteristic of this part of the season is that the ocean is at its coolest for the year in early March and starts warming up towards the end of March and going on further. When that happens, there is more heat in the atmosphere and there's also more moisture in the atmosphere. And as a consequence, there will be an increasing rainfall intensity, which can lead to flooding in April and May. But at the same time, there will be many dry days and frequent dry spells. Also of note is that the oceans are not yet warm enough at this time of year to cause coral reef bleaching. In terms of the air temperatures that we feel, they will still be comfortably cool in March, but they will start rising uh, later on and therefore will start becoming less comfortable towards April and May with a chance of heat waves then which might actually cause heat stress in some cases. Keep in mind also that even though we're not yet in June, there have been tropical cyclones, including hurricanes, that took place before the 1st of June. Finally, also note that Saharan dust is blown into the Caribbean with the trade winds, with the dust episodes becoming more frequent by the month of May. So, I want to talk a little bit now about something that is not very well known yet uh, in the uh, Caribbean, and that is our heat season. Our heat season starts in April or May and ends in October. What is the heat season? That is the season during which most of the heat waves occur throughout the region. It's also the season during which the temperatures are slightly higher. And therefore, because the temperatures are higher and there are heat waves, and also our air humidity is increasing, we feel hotter. So our heat season is something to uh, start bearing in mind, especially because of warming climate in the Caribbean. As you can see, the month of March is still in the cool season, but May is solidly in the heat season. So we're going into the heat season. We already learned what is characteristic for March to May, but if we want to know now how this year might look a bit different than the usual March to May season, there are a number of things that we can look at that can drive our climate conditions to be slightly different or very different from what the norm is. And two of those are shown in this slide, and they refer to the ocean temperatures in the Atlantic and in the Pacific Ocean. On the left part uh, in the map, you can see yellowish and red colors, which signifies that the temperatures of the ocean at surface are currently warmer than usual for the time of year, and blue colors, which means slightly cooler than average for the time of year. Around the Caribbean Sea and north of the Guianas, you see mostly yellow and red colors, which means it's a little bit warmer and further east, over the tropical North Atlantic, you see cooler temperatures. This contrast between the heat uh, or the hotter seas in the west and the cooler seas in the east will boost the heat, the humidity, and the flood potential in the Western Caribbean and the Guianas, but the cooler temperatures might actually favor drought and temper the heat in the Eastern Caribbean. But we don't only look at temperatures of the ocean in the Atlantic, because the Pacific also plays a role in our climate in the Caribbean. We are now coming out slowly out of a La Nina event, which means when the ocean is unusually cool in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Yes, even though it's far away from us, there is a strong link with our climate. Going out of a La Nina now at this time of year boosts rainfall typically and flood potential in the Guyanas, 
but they may favor drought in the Northern Caribbean. So basically three things to keep in mind. An enhanced flood potential, so more chances of flooding in the Western Caribbean and the Guyanas. Also the heat season that starts, but the heat might be slightly tempered in the Eastern Caribbean and drought may occur in parts of the region. So let's focus a little bit on drought. Here we see a forecast of the expected or the suggested alert levels for drought that we can expect by the end of May. If your area colors green, that means that there's no concern expected at the end of May. If it's yellow, that means we expect that there is a possibility for drought impacts by the end of the month of May. And so we issue then a suggested drought watch. If your area is colored orange or brown, that means that there's a drought warning, and that in turn means that drought impacts are likely to be in place at the end of May of this year. So you can see that uh, large portions of the islands are either yellow or orange, and so it is important to keep up to date with the drought forecast. If you want to find out more about climate, you can keep yourself updated by making your National Meteorological Service your go-to partner for local climate information. We at the Caribbean Regional Climate Center at the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology provide additional regional scale information. And this information, for instance, is found in our bulletins, for instance, our Karikov Climate Outlook newsletter, which is quite technical, a Caribbean Coral Reef Watch, which looks at coral reef bleaching, a Caribbean Drought Bulletin, which looks at recent and expected drought and some impacts of that drought, and then also more uh, sector-specific information. For instance, for the agriculture sector, for the health sector, and for the tourism sector region-wide. But again, keep in mind that more detailed information and more locally specific and locally relevant information is often available through your National Met Service. For instance, also through bulletins that they issue. So finally, I want to remind you that Regional climate data, information, tools, and products are all available on our website. They are available for free. I want to thank you for listening and again wish you a happy World Meteorological Day.